In this video, we'll see how you can use the asstridit function to create complex views of an existing array. Let's start by creating a 2D array with 8 integers called foo. If you remember, earlier on in the course, we talked about how arrays are stored in contiguous, fixed-size memory blocks. In this case, foo would be stored in memory like this. Since foo is comprised of 64-bit integers, each block of memory is 64 bits. Alternatively stated, each block of memory is 8 bytes because there's 8 bits in a byte. So let's say we're here at the beginning of the array. If we want to get to the third element, we know we need to jump across 16 bytes of data. Now let's say we're back at the beginning of the array and we want to get to the element at index 1, 1. In this case, we can do some basic math to figure out that we need to jump across 32 bytes to get to the second row, and then another 8 bytes to get to the second element in the second row. This is exactly what the strides attribute of a NumPy array tells us. For example, foo.strides returns the tuple 32, 8, which means to get to the next row you need to jump across 32 bytes, and to get to the next column you need to jump across 8 bytes. Here's the cool part. With mp.lib.stridetricks.asstrided, you can create a new view of an existing array by modifying its strides, but not copying or modifying its data. For example, if we wanted to build a view of foo that looks like this, we can do bar equals mp.lib.stridetricks.asstrided, x equals foo, shape equals 3 by 4, and strides equals 16 by 8. This works because we define a 3x4 array that's based on the data in foo, but in this array we tell NumPy to jump across 16 bytes to get to the next row, and 8 bytes to get to the next column. For example, if we request the element at index 1, 0, NumPy starts at the beginning of the array, and then jumps across 1 row and 0 columns, so 16 bytes plus 0 bytes, landing here and reads off the element 30. To get to index 1, 3, NumPy jumps across one row and three columns, so 16 bytes plus 24 bytes, landing here, and reads off element 60. Now, it's really important to note that bar is a view of foo. So if we modify bar, we'll also be modifying foo. For example, if we do bar square brackets 1 comma 0 equals 999, and then we print foo, notice that foo gets modified even though we changed bar. But not only that, if we print bar, you can see that element 1, 0 and element 0, 2 changed. That's because they both point to the same block of memory. If you use this function, you need to be really careful that your strides make sense and that they don't spill outside the memory bounds of the original array. If you make your strides too big, you could end up pointing to memory that's used by a completely different variable, and you could end up crashing or corrupting your program. That's why the docs for as strided have this big red box that says warning. This function has to be used with extreme care.